Hi folks and welcome back to the plot. It's a gorgeous, gorgeous day. Although it is windy and quite cold, we have a gorgeous, gorgeous blue skies and it's really starting to warm up in the greenhouse. Now, the good news is today is Sunday. It's Sunday morning, it's like nine o'clock. I got up bright and early and I'm feeling pretty good because I've got the week off work and this is the first of hopefully many, many dedicated allotment days. We've got a few bits to do at home, so it's not all gonna be at the allotment. I'm not gonna be doing a video every day, unfortunately, but today is kind of a battle between my head and my heart, right? My heart just wants to tidy. It wants to clear. I wanna get all of these beds like tidied up. I wanna be doing bed prep. I wanna get all the weed membrane off. I wanna give it a weed, a top dressing with manure and mulch if it needs it. But my head is telling me sewing. I need to be sewing first. And that is because hopefully like you saw in my last video, I have had some terribly, terribly patchy germination on a lot of the early March sowing. So my brassicas, meh, they're okay, but my lettuce especially, wow, just really, really poor. And as well, we're into late March now and there's a lot of the early March stuff that I just kind of didn't quite get in the ground. It's all been a bit of a rush recently. So today I'm just gonna take my time. Lots and lots of sowing. I've got some potatoes over here that have been chitting for a little while. So I'm gonna get these either in the ground or in pots. Peas, oh my God, I should have done peas like a month ago. I haven't got my sweet peas on the go or anything like that. So it's gonna be a bit of a sowing marathon today. I love having this kind of dedicated greenhouse just for sowing. So I'm just grabbing all of the trays and bringing them in here. Not all the trays, just the ones that need uh, a bit of remedial sewing, you know. I'm really disappointed in some of them. So with one like this, all I'm gonna probably do is use fresh seed on here. I can see one or two of the webs wonderful are just starting to pick up the Red salad bowl, nothing on that though. So I'm gonna sow some more, but last night I did buy some more lettuce seed. A lot of the lettuce seed, you know, you get like thousands of seeds in a packet. So um, quite often I just do not use it all. And then the next few years I'm like, oh, well, I've still got plenty. Um, and then you realize that maybe it's a little bit past it. What's this one as well? Medania spinach. That one I can see is just starting to germinate. So maybe it's just a little bit slower. This tray was a little bit dry, but same for these. Brassicas, once again, with pretty spotty germination. I think it's just this scarlet kale, really, that needs a little, a few more seeds. Wow, oh my God. <laughs> Can you see the roots on some of these already? What the heck? That is bonkers. One thing I'm gonna do as well is actually uh, a bit of thinning, which I'm not, I'm not normally very good at, but a lot of these brassicas should really just have one in each cell. And some of these have got two or three in now. The other one, the spring onions are just absolutely pitiful. <laughs> just shocking germination there. I think I only did this top half, to be fair, um, with an idea of doing the bottom half as succession. But this top half definitely needs redoing and my beetroot as well. Once again, here only did the first two rows, but still. Oh, I thought that had an aphid on it for a second. Nope, that's good. But yes, yeah, still. That does need redoing with fresh seed. And yesterday as well, I bought some golden beetroot, which I'm very excited to try. I saw that on um, Hugh Richards' channel, actually. He said they're much milder than red beetroot. So one, I'm very excited to give a go. We did go to the garden center and I was hoping to buy some seeds there and they didn't have any seeds, but they did have starts, but they had like, I don't know, 200 plants in a little cell for like four pounds or something. I, like, I do not want 400. <laughs> golden beetroot all germinated at the same time and just a massive glut that, you know, it would immediately put me off the golden beetroot, I think, even if it was very nice. So I'm gonna get all of these done. I bought some new cowslips as well from the garden center. Um, these apparently you have to sow fresh. So I'm gonna give these another go. And I do have one cowslip plant that was actually given to me by Liz Zora, which has established. It's like been sat there for a few years, not doing much, but that is on the go now. So when it's finished flowering, collect those seeds as well and sow those as well as these. But that does bring me on to the flowers as well, which I showed off in yesterday's update video and they all just need a bit of a refresh. And there's lots more sours, uh, lots more flowers that I can start sowing. Now the sweet peas as well I'm gonna do and I think there's probably a few more flowers that I can do. I'll probably start a new tray of flowers in one of these. I love having this set up. It is just so, so cool. So I'm gonna get sewing. I'm just gonna get my head down, get a nice podcast on. I found a cool one that I'm listening to at the moment and really enjoying. And uh, I love it when you can just zone out and focus on a bit of sewing. a 
wonderful day, folks. The sun has stayed out the entire time we've had blue skies. It's half 12 now. I've been at this for a good few hours. I'm very excited to pick up the camera and show you around all the seed trays that I've sown. At the moment, I'm just doing some herbs, which is not one, I don't tend to do too many herbs. I always say, let's do herbs in the back garden. And Jess agrees and we go, yeah, yeah, we'll do some herbs in the back garden so that you can just pick them fresh when you need it. And then do we ever actually do them? No, we just don't. So I've got the space this year. I thought, why not? Why not just do some? I'm doing some basil now. And this is one, to be fair, that I do always grow. There's always some of this kicking around the foot of the tomatoes. And it just, I tell you what, even if you didn't grow basil to, to eat, it's worth it just for the smell. It's one of my favorite things to grow. And when the, the greenhouse, or the, I'm really looking forward to having some in the polytunnel this year, when that starts to really smell, it just, oh. Oh, joyous, you know, one of those just joys of life. So I'm doing two types of basil this year. I've got some old classic basil. It literally just says basil, Italian classic, and some Genovese as well. So, so I don't know if this is meant to be that different. I'm gonna sew it anyway. Doing some thyme and some dill as well. Not, not common for me, so just thought I'd give it a go. But yes, I'm gonna get these. And then there's so much more to do as well. I really want to get the peas on the go. I've not done those yet. And really, I should be thinking about getting some parsnips and some carrots in the ground, but I don't have much luck with those, although the parsnips were pretty good last year. So I just need to do some bed prep before I can do the carrots, really. I do have an idea of where I'm going to put some parsnips. Now, I've probably done quite a few of these things <laughs> incorrectly, to be honest. It's just sort of giving a lot of these things a go. I have, unfortunately, run out of container-wise seed trays. I think they must be being used at home, but I might end up having to do another order. You can never really have enough of them. Well, I suppose that's not true, is it? But you know what I mean. Um, but, for example, I've just sowed what we've got, basil, Basil thyme, dill, and the chives all in one tray. And to be honest, these would probably be better off. Maybe some in their own little pots or, you know, little quarter trays that you then kind of prick out or something like that. But I'm just sort of doing whatever my hands find, you know, in the seed packet and going, yeah, I got a bit of space in this seed tray. Let's, let's pop it in here. And some things we'll have success think, with, some we won't, but that's fine. That's just my way of gardening. Um, Still lots of things I just don't have actually that much experience with, even after four years of growing. Four years? This might be my fifth year, actually. God, I think it's fourth year. Let's say four, shall we? But if you ask me, there's absolutely no harm in just figuring it out as you go. Right, let me pick you up and show you what I've been up to. I am just loving the greenhouse today, folks. Like, the new staging and just... The project being complete is so, it's just the perfect time of year for the greenhouse as well, you know. It feels like summer in here. It feels like spring outside. There's a lovely cool breeze, but in the actual greenhouse, ah, oh, it just feels tropical almost, you know. And it is going to be too warm for some of these seedlings. So the brassicas especially have all gone into the polytunnel, but this is starting to fill up. We've got the two trays of the tomatoes, the flowers that have just been re-sown. Under here, I've got some of the, um, the not particularly frost hardy stuff. So if we do get any real frost forecast, my plan is to just pick up this tray and take it home. But we've got some chilies at the back, some aubergines. I've just done the cowslips, another really heavily sewed. That pretty much the entire packet <laughs> went into there. So we can kind of prick out and, and sort out later. We've got the ground cherry, the um, physalis, I think that's called, um, which was sent to me by Audrey. We're gonna give that a go. We've got some sunflowers, and in fact, I have a, a pro-cut sunflower that I'm gonna wait a little bit longer. Um, but this is just a bog-standard Russian giant. And then I've done a load of wild marjoram as well, which once again is a seed packet I've had sitting around for a little while. So I've just dumped it all in here and hopefully some of it will germinate. We've just got those under the propagator for a little bit of extra heat. Hopefully now these, the spring onions, they've all been re-sowed and hopefully they're gonna take quite nicely. One question I did get asked a lot about was whether or not the seedlings would get enough light on this shelf. And this one is the five tier. So it has like the most packed in and you can see quite clearly the light reaching this tray 
but not this one. So it would probably be better if it was at the back of the greenhouse because this is south facing. We've got the sun rising over there and setting over there. So if it was on the back wall there, which was the original plan, it probably would get a bit more light, but it's here for now and I'm gonna see. I have a feeling that it will be enough, but um, we were talking about it on Potty Mouth Live and Jessie said actually, she had a similar setup once and it, it wasn't so good. So what I might end up doing, if it has to be here and I can't get it on the back wall there, then maybe I might take out one of the shelves and then give it all a little bit more room. But in here, I've done another tray of flowers, a few random ones. There's one called the Celine, um, which I just found a packet of. It's out of date. I'd never sewn it. So I just thought, right, let's get it in here. The basket flower, that looks quite cool. Audrey sent that one over. Marigolds, I realized I hadn't done any marigolds yet, whoops. Um, and I've done some oxide daisies as well. Oh, and I've just remembered. Where is it? In this second greenhouse, there is somewhere, I think. Ah, there it is. All of my saved um, pot marigold seeds. So at the end of the season, I always go around and just cut these into a little Coke bottle. <laughs> Not particularly pretty, but it does work. So I tend to just dump those in a big round pot and then plant them out. I would say that generally speaking, flowers have a lot more kind of special instructions. They often need a little bit more kind of thinking about when you're sowing them compared to a lot of veg. A lot of the veg, you just learn the basics of the families. And I guess you could probably do the same thing for flowers. But if you're like most allotmenters and you're not a flower expert, then it can, it can just seem a bit more finicky, a bit more difficult. But I have no fear about playing around with this kind of stuff. And calendula is one of those examples of that really you're not you're meant to just sow it direct and you're not really meant to transplant all the instructions online say it doesn't transplant very well i've been transplanting it for years and every year i always have lovely kind of calendula borders down this main path so i'll be doing that again this year the lettuce trays have all been re-sown although i did run out of red bowl salad seed but we'll hopefully get a bit of a succession of salad in as well because i've done a bit more that and I've got some more seeds on the way for the lettuce. I've done a little tray of a, a loose leaf salad mix and I did this last year actually and I, I just sowed way too much so this year I've gone really sparse and that will probably hopefully be the first salad that we're eating. It's a really nice cut and come again mixture from Premier Seeds Direct. Down here the beetroot has been redone. I've also another just an old seed packet that I found and I thought well let's get this in the soil and this is uh, Sweet Williams. Once again, not one that you're meant to transplant, but I'm just gonna see if we get any germination and I'll transplant them out. They're a bit annoying, they're biennials, which are always a bit frustrating, you know, teaches you a bit of patience. And then these are the herbs that I've just done. Right down on the bottom as well, I forgot about these. I did a couple of spinach pots and this once again was just really old seed. I thought instead of just chucking it away, let's just get these in pots right on the bottom. Um, spinach likes it cooler and darker, as does a lot of the kind of the salad crops. So hopefully them being in the shade on these trays will be ideal. And then in the polytunnel, we can look at the brassicas, but oh, look at these. So these are the Welsh cowslips I was just talking about. And at the back, we've got some of the spring bulbs just popping up, but I have no idea what this is. Do you know what these are? Let me know in the comments because I don't know, it's far too big for a crocus, but too small for a tulip, maybe like a mini tulip or something. Quite thin vegetation. Over on this side, we've got loads and loads of tulips coming up, which are very characteristic and distinctive. And there's one <laughs> little daffodil poking out at the back there. But inside the tunnel, yes, we've got the refreshed, the thinned brassica. I actually had a, a snack on a few of these, treated them like microgreens, they were quite pleasant. Um, so they've been thin, thinned out and re-sowed wherever there's gaps. And this is a new brassica tray with some tronchada. Oh, I'm gonna find the thing. I can't remember what that one is. It's a kale that uh, Audrey sent over. Real food comes dirty, meant to be really nice. Done my purple sprouting broccoli much earlier than most, um, but I always started this early and I end up with a fantastic harvest. Found some broccoli rab seeds, which I've never done before, and some Evesham special Brussels sprouts as well. And over here, another just old seed packet full of giant winter leek seed. I think it was meant to be sown by 21, so I just sowed, I don't know how many seeds in here, but they will probably start to pop up. And it'll be interesting to see how they do compared to the Musselboro leeks, which have been module sown, which I don't normally do. I do normally do the, the leeks in a pot like that and then just split them all up. Oh, folks, this is just, this is it for me. You know, this is really 
when it all just starts to feel amazing. You know, when the sun is out, the blue sky, you've been sowing. I said at the beginning, I really wanted to get tidying. And that is true. Um, you know, it's a bit like uh, when you've got serious things you need to do and then you like start tidying up the house or something like that. But the same way about the allotment, um, it would have been a bit of kind of procrastination. And I do still really want to do it, but oh my goodness, I've had such a good time just getting stuck in to the sowing. I must remember to harvest the purple spring broccoli today, but I'm going to carry on. A bit more sowing, um, nice little break with the camera, but I'm going to get all of the peas and the sweet peas done. And I've got some guttering. There's actually one in the polytunnel that I use, but I found this one as well just down here. Um, so I'm going to do two lots of guttering and the hanging shelves will hopefully be perfect for putting those on this year. <sighs> Blimey folks, it is properly, properly warm today, but you can see the gutter peas are done. They fit on this floating shelf perfectly. I was a little bit worried that I wouldn't be able to get two abreast, but Look at that. I have been very careful as well. One thing I think you need to be careful of when you've got a floating shelf like this is overloading one end and having it kind of flip or lose balance. I'm not sure that would happen with this because it's so so long and it's supported in three places, but I've been conscious of it nevertheless. Oh, the brassicas. Oh, I'm really, I am sort of um, more wondering if it's gonna be a little too warm in here, but I think the highs are just around 20. We've still got really good ventilation. So even on today, super, oh, then again, it's getting up to, it's currently 25. So I think maybe a little bit warm for the brassicas. I'll just have to move them on quite quick as soon as they've got nice and established and they can fight off the pests and the slugs. I've gone for two varieties in here today and this is just so perfect. The biggest benefit of having them up here is that they can't get eaten by mice unless there's any real, real ninja mice <laughs> that are gonna be climbing up here. Um, you know, if they're on the ground, they're very vulnerable. So I've gone, gone for two. I've gone for alderman in, uh, in this big white one. This is a slightly deeper tray. And then I've gone for the Oregon Sugar Pod. I think it's called another one I saw, Hugh Richards. I think he's always talking about that one. So um, yeah, that one's in a slightly smaller gutter, but hopefully it will do okay. And this week, one of the many things on the to-do list, it's a bit scary, I kind of, I don't love to-do lists because when I make them, they balloon, they get longer and longer and it starts to get a bit daunting. You know, I'll flash up a little bit of the to-do list for this week. I'm definitely making no promises that I'll get it all done, but it's, it is good to have it on there as a bit of an ambition, but you know, it always takes longer than you thought. Today, we're coming up to half two now, been here since a good, you know, start, get, properly got started around 10. So that's a pretty good shift and I've done maybe five new trays and refreshed a few and these, these peas. So it's, it's not that much actually, um, but I have been working at quite a leisurely pace. What was I saying? I think I started that. I definitely had something to say at the start of that. Oh yeah, the to-do list <laughs> is pea structures. I want to build some kind of slightly more robust pea frame this year, you know, and um, that's definitely on the list for things to do. I do have that kind of like metal maybe like a bit of a bed I found or something, that would be quite good. But I want to do something for the tall piece. Aldermen, I think, get proper kind of five, six foot high. So it would be good to have something that can properly support them. And as soon as I've done that one, as soon as I've planted that one out, I want to sow it again and then plant out another row, maybe even two or three. I've never done proper successional peas. And this year I would like to kind of up the ante with it a little bit because we've got lots of space and they do take up quite a lot of space, but I've got the space, so I should use it really, shouldn't I? In the greenhouse, we've got a few more peas as well. God, it's warm in here today. Down here, we've got my sweet peas that I've started off and I've gone for two, two varieties. One is the old fashioned, uh, just had, a, had the seed packet. I probably nicked it off Jess, to be honest, but up close, this is the exciting one. This one is the Chelsea collection. And this was very, very kindly sent to me by Grown Local from his own personal collection. He doesn't sell these, but um, he bought some because Steve said that these were his favorite. So on the list this week as well, I'm saying it, so I've got to do it now. I'm hoping I can get a, a sweet pea bed built and um, recycle Steve's sweet pea frame. So that will be very nice up here. I've got the delicate peas. I've never tried these before. I'm not sure how big they get um, or really what to expect. They were in one of those little seed packets, you know? Um, so uh, one of those, I think I got them for 99p ages ago. So I've sowed like four in each of these modules. I'm not sure if they're actually gonna germinate, but we'll give them a go. These are in the older, slightly flimsy root trainers, but they still work quite well. 
they're just not as nice as these fancy garland ones, which were also sent to me by Grown Local, actually. We've got tomatoes on the go, we've got lettuce. I've shown you this all already, but it is just, oh, I love it, I love it. I love to see it all filling up. And actually it is starting to fill up now, isn't it? We've still got kind of four trays empty, plenty of space for sowing more. It won't be long until this starts to fill up with things like the French beans. A lot of the beans, it's a little bit too early, so I haven't done those yet. But the beans and the summer plants, things like the squashes and the cucumber. I hold off on my cucumbers. I know a lot of people start them really early, but uh, I like it. I like to wait until the nights have really started to warm up. Every time I've tried cucumbers early, they've just been really miserable and pathetic. And then the, the ones I sow in April, mid-April, they're the ones that actually look quite good. I just checked the thermometer and we've had pretty warm nights, actually. We're, we're trending towards kind of six degrees on the lows. So it's really nice and it's good news for everything in here, especially the tomatoes when they finally germinate. Oh, come on, hurry up, hurry up. The final job for me today really Oh, look at the blue sky, it's so good, isn't it? The final job for me today is just getting in here and give this purple spray and broccoli a harvest. I've had uh, two or three really good harvests from here, but I am so excited for this to be done, to be honest, because then we can finally get a bit of structure in these beds and get a wood chip path down the middle. This is, I think, just about Still edible, yes. I think a few more days and this would be going to flower. It is definitely nicer the earlier you can get it, but I'm gonna get in here. And it's not my favorite job, to be honest. It does take quite a long time to harvest, but it is absolutely divine. So always well worth it. If there was one veg crop I was always gonna grow, um, I think purple spray and broccoli might be it. This bag is absolutely brewing. A very good crop this year quite a few really nice dense heads like this. Oh, it's just my favorite. A lot of veg becomes palatable when you, you know, fry it up with garlic and butter. And don't get me wrong, that is a very nice way to cook purple spring broccoli, but it's just really nice steamed as well by itself. I mean, this stuff is so nice. I, I can eat it raw. The small young bits, they just have this amazing nutty flavor. They're really, really nice. And for someone who doesn't really like proper broccoli, you know, Calabrese, not for me, but purple spray and broccoli. I absolutely love it. It's got a little bit of a kind of pepperiness as well. A little bit of a kick. But very, very happy with this. What a day. What a, what a way to finish as well with a nice big spray and broccoli harvest. Thank you ever so much for joining me. Hopefully I'll see you again next time. An extra special thank you to all of my Chili Pepper Tier patrons and all of my patrons, Tony, Bill, Pam, Louise, Mel, Michael, Denise, Socks in the Garden, Andrew and Sarah.